Hey, my family in Christ, how are you guys doing? Uh, it's been a while, you know, since I put up a video. Uh, again, you know, like what I said in, in uh, the past video, and you know, I don't want to just make videos just, just for the sake of it. You know, I want to make sure that I uh, make a video that is uplifting, it has life, and, and you know, and that is actually that's more beneficial for you guys um, in your in your walk in Christ. You know, I don't want to make a video so it just be focused on me, so I can have you know a lot of followers and stuff. And I personally, again, I've said many times, I I don't like being center of attention. I don't like being cost you know being a leader and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I mean, if I could, you know, I'd uh, I just do my thing for God. I go minister. And yeah, just share them wherever I go. But you know, God has uh, given this platform to uh, share Him um, because I was uh, I did an online conference uh, the other day, like a prophetic prophetic conference with Cheryl Fritz and a sister in Christ. Uh, you know, she uh, she said that you know, she spoke that over me, and she says that you know I will be speaking a lot more and all of these things. You know, through either. Um, through online or, or you know and a whole bunch of stuff she says for me you know keep going so this is the Lord's will so I'm gonna do it yeah so anyways um how are you guys doing how's how's your walk in Christ how's how's life you know how's how's the how's everything I mean if you guys live in the states how's everything going there you know it's you know me from being Canada everything you know Vancouver especially a lot of uh, places are actually starting to open up. Uh, malls are open, gyms are open. Uh, there's we still have a few lockdown here and there, but I know following the news, uh, what's happening in the states. You know, I pray for, pray for you guys, my brothers and sisters there. You know, take heart, don't don't lose hope. You know, um, yeah, there's something I went up actually. We're gonna go over later here in this video. You know, taking back your city, taking back your country. Okay. And yeah, and you just gotta remember one thing: our enemy is not flesh and blood, but it's you know principalities and you know and the print and the demons in the air, you know, dark spiritual darkness and all that stuff. So I'll cover that later on. Right now, you know, I'm just again, I just felt like you know I woke up early. I felt like God says you know make a video, and I wanted to know what what it was about. And today I want to discuss about the Holy Spirit. You know, the most important you know, one most important uh, Godhead you know one of the most important it's and also though it's the most neglected um, one and the most neglected God in the um, yeah, in the, in the Godhead and the, or called the or Trinity or whatever you want to call it but yeah so this is what I want to share today we're gonna discuss in the Holy Spirit um, so yeah uh, for myself uh, updates I uh, I stopped go. I stopped my uh, social media. Uh, you know, my Facebook and my Instagram. I just took some time away from it. You know, I felt like it was. It's been very. Yeah, it, it consumes you. You know, it's it's like an addiction, right? And it actually. I, there's this image that really sticks with me. Uh, I'm gonna look for it. I'm gonna share with you guys. Which I wanna, which I find very tricky. Give me one sec. Yeah, she can't find it. So, but anyways, there's this image that I uh, that really sticks to uh, to me, and you know, PL, I've seen it, I've seen it on uh, Facebook and you know other social media platforms where it's got this hand coming out of a phone. You know, it's got your face because it's got your attention. And, and guess what? That thing is real. You know, it's for real. You know, it's like it's like an addiction. It's grabbing your attention. It's grabbing your face. Right? It's because when I first, the, probably the first day when I, I deleted uh, my Facebook and my Instagram account, you know, on my phone, uh, I'd be the first thing, it's just like, it's like a habit. You know, I wake up at 3 in the morning, go to the washroom, come back, and all, all of a sudden, I'd find, without thinking, I just automatically look through my phone and look for the Facebook. You know, it's become, it's become a habit. You know, the, probably the first couple of days, that's what it was like. You know, I, Part of me was like, what's going on in the Facebook world? What's going on, you know, in, in Instagram? What's going on here? You know, it's, it's actually the, 
an addiction and it's you know it takes away our focus from God and that's what I uh, that's what I wanted to do I uh, it's been two weeks I haven't gotten any on, on my Facebook and all that stuff and I'm keeping YouTube so I can make videos and you know on YouTube this is where I find a lot of video teachings and all that stuff right but as for social media a lot of I find useless stuff you know I find a lot of um, people where it's all about them even ministers when they post things you know it's all about them you know it's like yo look at me i'm gonna be the next pastor yo look at me i'm the next christian superstar i'm rolling with this guy i'm rolling with benny Hinn. i'm rolling with this i personally don't like that like i for me i don't believe in hyping yourself so you can be the next big christian superstar right like your mindset should be it's Yo, I'm the next, I'm the next servant. I'm a servant. I don't need a platform. I don't need this. I just serve people those around me. Because if you want to be great in the kingdom, you got to serve, right? So drop that hype when it's all about you. So this is, for me, that's what I've been focusing on. For the past couple of weeks, uh, my, um, I've been focusing on my relationship with God and where I'm at, you know, make sure God is correcting me, you know. I find now also, like, that's what I wanted to lead in Facebook because I got annoyed with some of the people, right? I, mean, I don't post or anything, you know, against them. I mean, I'll pray for them, but you know, this I find that a lot of one, a lot of these so-called leader Christians, when you challenge them by scripture, they get offended and they delete you, or their excuse is, "Oh, you don't believe," you know, "you don't believe my theology," or "you're under witchcraft." You know what I mean? Because I had a brother rebu rebuke this other brother who, you know, is whose ideas, of, you know, are, are changing. You know, he's becoming more. Uh, universalist, you know, that's the you know, universalist and the once saved, always saved kind of thing. And for me, I don't believe that the once saved, always saved, right? And you know, it, it takes away the divinity of God, where oh, you're you know, where you're trying to say, oh, and when you die, God is God will forgive you because you know, this brother's sharing that God will, you know, um, hell is not eternal, God is not going to send you there all kind of stuff you know god knows god knows your heart and you know kind of trying to kind of, kind of steer, steering away from what jesus did you know what i mean you're trying to say like jesus dying on the cross you know it's it has it loses it loses its, you know divinity it's again it's just one of the things in the revelation where it says you know all the all these pro false prophets that'll take away the divinity of of jesus you know it takes away what God did, you know, because you say, oh yeah, God is love, this and that. God doesn't, you know, God was not gonna send me there because, you know, I'm a good person, I'm a good, you know, and all that kind of stuff. But his reality is, God is love. Yes, he is love. He is righteous. He is a king, right? He does get angry. He does get angry, okay? So to tell me that God doesn't, God is love, he doesn't get angry. When Satan tried to take his throne, he just smiles and he said, Oh, Lucifer, you little rascal. I'm, I'm gonna, oh, I'm so, mmm, but, mmm, you know, I'm not gonna get mad. What you did was wrong, but I'm gonna send you to hell for a bit. You think God said that? No. God got mad. He kicked him out, right? He kicked him out. And where is he gonna go? He's gonna internal punishment, right? Remember, hell isn't made for for us humans, it's made for the devil and his angels. But the devil knows he can't get to God, so his only option is to get us to go with, you know, to him. And yeah, it's sad, but that's just reality, right? Hell is real. Heaven is real. I've had encounters. And a couple of weeks ago, I I asked a glimpse of um, of hell, and the feeling was, you know, this eternal separation I was just away from God I was just this alone in this place I was like everything around me was just mud you know behind me was like cave walls where I couldn't really move but it was like eternal depression I had no hope and lingering around me were these snakes waiting to torture me waiting to torment me waiting so that I felt that and I was like God I, I, it's it's this separation from God knowing that there is no hope that there is no nothing else there's no more but here i'm here on earth i still have a chance you know it's it's the spiritual world is a lot bigger than we think you know the battle isn't finished you know we're the battle is for our souls you know 
it's we have something special in us which the devil wants i mean that's you know like we are made in the image and likeness of god why did you know why would the you know enemy want to corrupt that seed because there's something special in us you know far more greater than the cherubs the angels and everything else god put god made us he put he breathed his life and we were created in his image and likeness so again if we are creating the image and likeness of god yes we are love but we do get mad you know when when there's here's an example if someone if a robber tries to say or a thief try to kidnap your you know your kids or you or your you know your, your, your kid you know your your loved ones basically are you gonna get mad at that robber or are you just gonna smile and let him go oh, no no i'm a loving person what's your first reaction you obviously you're gonna be mad right there's 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 you know you're gonna be angry as well so that's if you're meeting the image and likeness god gets mad so i'm gonna give you reality it's check it's that god is love but he does get mad of unrighteous things you know obviously the devil but stay away from that i hate the universal teaching I hate that once save always save you know it's, I was praying yeah I was praying last week is God I hope that you know the videos that I make I don't want to I don't want to be deceiving people I don't want to be deceived you know I don't want to be called a false prophet and I don't want that right because many false prophets are you know again you guys know the scriptures many are falling away from the faith even you know it says even the elect can be deceived and for me, I don't want to. That's why I abide in the Holy Spirit more than before, especially with these times. You know, like, I don't want to be seen as a leader. I don't want to be a leader. I just want to be able to serve my family, that's you guys, and help you guys grow. I'm sure what I'm sharing is my relationship with God, what I have, you know, what I've been doing. And I hope that my, my through my uh, testimonies and teachings it helps you guys grow and you guys seek for yourself you know don't look at me as the end all of you know of teaching let it be as a tool because we're all growing you know i i listen to uh, people on youtube you know guys that are known people that are unknown because they all have a revelation and we all want to constantly grow right see i for these past couple of weeks my focus has been a lot more of lot more of more of the holy spirit you know more time with the lord and i for me i just want to grow i want to get to know him right if you're not growing as a christian you're you know like for me my prayer life is the most important thing if if you don't have a prayer life you don't have a christian life it's that simple right you, in your christian life especially now you know a lot of people are still under quarantine and can't minister as much you should this is your opportunity to actually grow 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 in him you know your prayer time because if you're not then you're just backsliding right if you're not going forward with the kingdom of god if you're not getting to know the lord if you're not reading you're not praying you're not doing this if you're not basically if you're not going forward you're backsliding okay that's pretty much it it's all that's all comes down to right again it comes to spiritual discipline you got to discipline yourself right you know take take the Put away the TV, t turn it off. That's social media, delete it. Try it for a couple of weeks. And for me, it's been two weeks and I don't even think I'm gonna go back on. Like, I love, I feel free. I feel, you know, it's, I get to focus on God a lot more. And, and it's been actually a lot more, it's a lot more beneficial for you spiritually because like it's, I have been doing, I've been spending a lot more time with the Holy Spirit. And I know I've, uh, I've, been pra I've been practicing on the gifts of our interpreting of tongues. And I'd speak in tongues and then I'd write it out. And I've just been having such amazing revelations from God. And my spiritual sense is actually I've been a lot more. I became, you know, it's become a lot more sensitive in the spirit. And um, again, you know, through the stuff I've been teaching, you know, prayer and fasting. You know, fasting not just food, but, you know, putting in the stupid stuff. You know, like what you watch and what you, you know, what you listen to, right? Like even when I go to the gym and I work out, man, my music is soaking music or classical guitar music like my spirit can't stand you know all the old music that i used to listen to i was and i was big into like west coast rap and like you know the lincoln parks and stuff and i can't stand it like my spirit knows that it's garbage for you it you know it's bringing me down you know it's lowering you it's like 
you know, when you people like for me, I've never been addicted to smoking. I've never smoked or drank or anything. But when you are in, when you know, when you live a healthy lifestyle, you know, like exercise, eating right, your body just naturally rejects all these bad foods, right? You know, smoke, cigarettes, or any other junk. So it goes in the spirit as well too. Uh, the more you are closer to the Holy Spirit, the more you're in tune with your inner man, you naturally want to get rid of these things. Just like, you know, addiction comes off, especially a lot of uh, a lot of men, women, you know, the struggle, you know, say pornography or any types of addiction. Don't try, you know, to force, you know, sometimes if you can't discipline yourself not to do it, well, it becomes a discipline. Work on your inner self. Work your, you know, your time with the Lord, the more, you know, your your time with Him, you know, as for me, how I broke some of you know, broke my addiction is my time with the Holy Spirit. When I knew that in my spirit, I was feeling it, that, you know, that um, I knew it was, I just knew it was wrong and I just, I just had the normal habit of not doing it because I'm in tune, you know, I'm in constant communication with the Holy Spirit. I'm communi always communicating with the Father and I'm always communicating with them. So the more I abide in them, the more I talk to them, all of these things start falling off, right? So again, you know, I've uh, you know I backtrack here and there. Um, again, I, I don't have a I don't have a game plan. I never do. You know, I just share what's in my heart and what God tells me. Um, so what I love right now, it's um, especially when it comes to uh, the gift that I love. It's, you know, when I speak in tongues and then I interpret it. Now that's it's prophecy, right? I mean, you're you're speaking the things of God. You're His kingdom come that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What's His will? So, if I don't know how to pray, I speak in tongues and then I interpret it. And then what comes out is revelation. So that's from that's from Him, right? And I've been I've been I, I love it. It's been doing this. It was just it's re, it's rewarding. It feels like. You know, and when you're time with God, it is the most precious thing that you can do on this earth. Hands down. You are such a feeling, you know, with God and because I don't know, it's just it's hard to explain. You just gotta explain yourself because when I'm in deep prayer with God, I have seen a I'm seeing a lot more visions than ever before. And I am seeing from out there like space in outer space you know all these wisdom from the lord and everything else you know i'm always seeing you know like outer space and seeing where i'm at and probably the the first i want to share with you guys man it's just here's where i'm at I, a great revela uh, uh, revelation from god and what it truly means i know a lot of people pass by it okay and it says here Ephesians 1 3 praise to be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ All right again who blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessings and I sat there as thinking Bless me, you know being you know blessed is like made whole made holy and the heavenly realms started looking in outer space all the other mansions and all of these things But yeah before that you know, God has made me holy over, you know, in the spiritual heaven, you know, so everything, every wisdom, not on just on this earth, but from all, everywhere else, I am above that, you know, like the, you know, the, the power that's been, that's in me, it's not just on this earth, but out there in the heavenly realms as well. And I started to think about it, you're, the name of Jesus, when you cast out devils, when you heal, you know, when you do this, all the power, God has given you is not just off this earth it's from everywhere that is beneath you that is below you so that's why a lot of the principalities a lot of the demons submit to you because your power goes beyond space beyond the dimension beyond the galaxies that's how God made you you are made more 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 so much more because of the Holy Spirit a lot of people forget the Holy Spirit, the most neglected one. So now I'm gonna get back. Let's you know, let's let's dive into this thing. Okay. It says right here, Deuteronomy. Uh, 
31 6 be strong and courage. now this is from the old covenant remember there's a difference between the old covenant and the new that's what you guys gotta understand you know what was the old covenant that was the promises of god the promise was the holy spirit that's always been this this the mysteries that's been all along that god dwell among men god will dwell with his people remember father son holy spirit it says be strong and courageous do not be afraid or terrified because of them for the Lord goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. That's from the old, right? The promises of he will never leave you nor forsake you. John 14, 16 says, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. John 16, 7, But very truly I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come, but I will, if I will go, I will send him to you. So here's a lot of things, you know, a lot, we've been taught a lot of, uh, that's what here's, um, that's why the Holy Spirit is, you know, neglected. Jesus is not here on earth. He's not. He is sitting on his throne. Because that's what he says, right? In, in Acts where he was taken up and he said, the angel says, why are you looking up? He's not, he's not here. But what did Jesus say? And all the things he said, you know, from the scripture, he says, he says that Jesus says in John 16, 7, that it, it is better that I go away. See, unless I go away, the advocate, the Holy Spirit, will not come. But if I go, I will send him to you. Right? And he ties in the scripture, John 14, 12. Okay? The things I do, you will do. And even greater because I go to the Father, right? So what happened when he went to the Father? He gave us the Holy Spirit, right? Again, that's what he says, that it's better to go, that I go away or the, whole, or the advocate will not come. And John 14, 16, and he says, John 14, 16, it's like, I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be help you and be with you forever. And when what happens when, again, you guys know this, what happens when the Holy Spirit comes? You will receive power, right? Power. That's why, these are the things that we, you know, like, these are the things that the promises of God. Do not fear. Guys, if you look at uh, look the Bible, there's actually over 300, some say 365 verses of know about fear of having no fear 365 scriptures of God saying do not fear so that's every day for one year God is telling you do not fear right think about that 365 days a year the Bible says that's why if you spend more time in the Bible reading it you will have no fear and God for God didn't give us a spirit of fear and timidity but power love and a sound mind Disciplined, focused. That's how sound, that's how sound mind is to me, you know. Um, but yeah, God has been telling you all along: do not be afraid. And who is here today with you right now? When Jesus left, who was with you? The Holy Spirit. The not the other. Okay, that's the other. You are fulfilling what Jesus says. Right, you are now with God, right? See, that's one of the things that I was speaking in tongues and I um, interpreted it. So I wrote it down. It says, a lot of people don't understand what know what means that God is with them, okay? God is with you side by side. God in you. You know, everybody has um, uh, a hope. Everybody has this hope in, uh, in this church, this church mentality that someday, someday, oh, someday the Lord is going to do this. Someday God is going to come. Oh, some, uh, someday, you know, this is for the children, you know, the generation of the children. Someday it's going to be this. It's now, okay? If God is with you now, okay, that's the Holy Spirit. Like for me, I imagine that visuals my, on my right hand side, that's how where God is. Right beside me. Jesus is in his throne, so is the Father, but who is with me right now? Who is on my right-hand side? It is the Holy Spirit. That's why a lot of people don't understand that. 
That's why some people still feel trapped. I still people feel hopeless. A lot of people this because they don't know who the Holy Spirit is. The Holy Spirit that is with me right now at this very presence on my right hand side. Who is who who is helping me speak, who is telling me the truth, who is telling me that do not fear, for God is with you. His promises has been fulfilled when he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon you. The Holy Spirit is me, and that's why I am able to do a lot more things now. You know, I can see more in the Spirit, hear in the Spirit. When I speak, things come to pass because it is the Holy Spirit's will. Because I'm bringing my Father's will on earth. He is the king. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And it's because of the Holy Spirit I am able to do all these things. And when I speak in tongues, I can interpret. When I see things in the... When I see a person, sometimes I see spirits on them. Like the other day, I was watching TV. And in the corner of my eye, I saw this sh shadow just coming out of from the TV. Right? That's discernment. I am growing more in, in, uh, in, in the spirit. And Holy Spirit is telling me to tell you guys that you are not alone. God is with you, right beside you. And Holy Spirit dwells within you. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. You want to know where God is? Everybody, as everybody looks up. No, God, you know, this. Please come, please that. No. If you have the Holy Spirit in you, God is already with you. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. For, for the kingdom of God is near. Repent. Repent. Change your thinking. Right? Repent and just change your thinking. And, or another way is, you know, like, um, like, uh, say, uh, renew your mind to the Word of God. So, another way you can think of it is, think in a different way. Don't think, you know, church has become a culture. Okay? It has become a culture of uh, things to do. Programs. You know, there's only a few churches out there that is truly Holy Spirit led. They only say that the Holy Spirit, but I, do, I really don't think they know what they're talking about. They don't really know that God is with them now at this very second. Within my own very breath that comes out of me, from every fiber, God is with me. The Holy Spirit is with me. I am not alone. If I'm not alone, you are not alone. Okay? I want you guys to, to, to really acknowledge that these are the things the Holy Spirit revealed to me when I spoke in tongues and not interpreted. God revealed to me that I am not alone. I am not helpless. I am not to live in fear. Even scripture, like some of you, you can't uh, feel despair, but what the scriptures say, right? See, when I'm in the Holy Spirit, when I'm talking with the Holy Spirit, the Bible backs it up. You know, any prophecy has to be led, you know, spirit-led, has to match up with the Bible. If it does not like match up with the Bible, it is not from God, okay? So it has to. So Holy Spirit has been revealing to me that that time, you know, the people who are hoping for, people are missing it. Right? People have been missing it for a long time. You know, they speak in tongues, they do this and stuff. It's because it's the traditions of the church that's slowing you guys down. God is with you now. That someday that you guys are hoping for, it's actually now. You know, it's what I find out is the same thing. Like what everybody has this mindset, like, oh, someday I'll, I'll have this. Someday, someday I'll be this. But guess what? You can't be that way unless you start now. It's same thing too with fitness. You can't say, oh, one day, someday I'm going to be in shape. One day I'm going to do this. No, it actually has to start that decision right now. See, my decision is I'm going to get in shape. I'm going to eat right. My decision today is actually I'm going to discipline myself to get up and do this. You can't get there unless you start here. So for you to get to where you want to be in God has to start now. That understanding is that Holy Spirit, God is with you at this very moment. God is not a liar. Because when He said that I will never leave you nor forsake you, He means it. 
He means it when he says that, Verily I tell you, the things that I do, you will do, and greater than these, because I am going to my Father. So when, because when I go, I'm going to send you another. It's better that I leave so that I can send you that other. Which other? The Holy Spirit. When Jesus died, who lifted him? Holy Spirit. The same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is in you. Never left you, never leave you, never will never leave you. Ever. So first key, first key thing in growing your Christian life is get to know who the Holy Spirit is. Get to know the Holy Spirit. Okay? I can't emphasize that enough. It's like, don't you make it a someday I'll get to know the Holy Spirit. It starts now. While you're watching this video, get to know the Holy Spirit. Just say, this is how I did it. I just said, Holy Spirit, <clears throat> I don't know you. I really don't. But I want to get to know you now. Teach me. Teach me. I want to get to know who you are. And this is this is the result. It's a because of me going on my on, on my knees, you know, from all of my heart, saying, Holy Spirit, I don't know you. you we can't let our intellectual thinking, you know, just because you got a college degree or Bible degree, that don't mean anything, ever. It is because if you want the true revelations, you have to know the Holy Spirit. Know that the Holy Spirit is in you. It is the most beautiful, precious gift that you can ever have. That God, that God lives in you. The Holy Spirit, right there. I'm gonna keep saying it, saying it. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I worship you. This is the true essence of what God intended to be, so that God can be with His people. God can be with His chosen. That's you. You are the chosen ones. But the key thing in Christianity is, for me, is growing. Humble yourselves. Don't think that you know so much. You don't. Lower yourself. Don't think that your platform is great. I don't need to learn from people that, that are unknown. You don't. Humble yourself. Stop thinking like, you know, like, oh, I am, I hang with this so-called pastor. This person is not known. I'm not going to go to their church. You're not that special. Don't think that you are that special. Okay? Yes, the, the Spirit of God in you is special. And what you're doing is special. But if you start to think that you are special, that you are someone in the body of Christ, that you're in the kingdom where you can think that you can be here. Let's just say you started from here. And all these brothers and sisters have been helping you rise up. And you're here and you forget about them. Humble yourself. You're not that important. You're not that special. Right? For me, I really don't care about the Billy Grahams or the Benny Hans and the Todd Whites and all that stuff. I admire them. I love the things that they do. But the Holy Spirit tells me it's the, it's the Holy Spirit working towards them. So that man is not that special. They are just flesh. They are just a vessel. That's how I see myself. I am not special. I am I am nobody. If I could, you know, I, well, if I, if I could, you know, I would, I would not even make kingdom lifestyles. God put it in me, you know, to, to represent what it means to have the kingdom lifestyle. That's why I do what I do, right? I do things for the glory of God. I do things for the Holy Spirit and always have a self check in where you're at. You know, like that's why social media has taken such a toll on me. You know, like, oh, how many likes? It's for everyone. You know, like how many likes, how many comments, you know, it's just like you post something every 10 seconds you're checking, you know, you're here. Oh, I got this much. Oh, nice. I, what does it do? Think about it. What does it do? Are these people that liking your stuff actually really care about you? Right? Why are you posting? Why do you think, you know, like why have that ego? That's, that part has become an addiction. That's what you guys got to realize. Checking how many likes and or how many files that you have. It's not important. Ever. I can care less how many. I can get like five followers here on uh, on my YouTube. I'm not it doesn't really bother me. I don't. I share this, whoever God leads into, then it's for them. Like here's a testimony I'm gonna share with you guys. Uh, five years ago when I just started my YouTube, I have a video of me praying for a blind lady. And 
she gets healed. I've only I had like probably like 20 something followers at the time. Right? You know, I started well, again, I started making videos because a brother started making videos and because of his videos I got to know the Lord more, you know. So I started making videos as well, you know, healing videos, you know, it's just this recent year I've been doing a lot more teaching. So anyways, at that time I only had 20 something followers and I posted a video of me praying for the blind lady and you know, God heals her. And a, you know, a brother that's you know, who's got who's got a lot of who's got a ministry and he's got lots of followers, you know, this and that. You see, message me. He says, "Thank you for that encouraging video." After that, watching the video, I got so encouraged. Now I have prayed for. He says, "I think for the past for like within those like three months, three to four months." He said, "He's prayed for over thirty-five blind people, and they got healed." I'm talking about blind people from birth, and you know, people that just really eye problems—not just blindness, you know, like blurry visions. And and they got healed. It has nothing to do with me, or I didn't teach them anything, right? So I showed something that what every Christian can do. All he did was got encouraged and believed that they can do it. They can do it. But guess what? Jesus said it first. The things I do, you will do it even greater, right? So who am I to say that I know everything, that I know it all, I can do it all wrong. So we should always have a mindset. Like for me, I so I tell a brother, right? So I will always have a mindset of a white belt, like a, you know, white belt jiu-jitsu or kickboxing or whatever you want. A, a white belt student, because a white belt student is always wanting to learn. Like, for me, people perceive me as you know, so-called higher level in you know in, in combat. You know, I've been in for like thirty. I've been training for like thirty something years. You know, I'm forty. I've been training for thirty something years, and they see me as you know high level. For me, I don't. I don't care what other people say, where they put me. For me, I'm always gonna be below. I always see myself as a white belt. So in the kingdom of God, I see myself as a white belt. I see myself as a, as a student wanting to know more of the Bible. I see myself as a student of the Holy Spirit. So that when, it, when, when the opportunity comes to lay hands on the sick or to minister or cast out devils, I am ready. So I always see myself as a student. I never will never ever see myself as high, ever. Because that to me is a garbage mindset. I, I'm not going to be a Christian so that I can be someone. I'm going to be a Christian so that you can be someone. Okay? So that I can lift you up. So that you can be, like, you can, that you can come out of your darkness that you're living in. So that I'm encouraging you to live the life for God. So that's what my job is in this body of Christ. Is to make sure that you get edified. And to do that, to have this mindset, it is because of my time with the Holy Spirit. Again, I only became like this more and more and more. The, the more I get to know the Holy Spirit, so this is the Holy Spirit and this is me, I want to be less and less and less and less where I don't exist, where I don't care anymore. Where I don't. This is because more of Him and less of me. That's the mindset. That's who should be our Christians. And to do that, it starts with the Holy Spirit. Right? These things are revelation from God that's been given me. Now, this is all from the interpretation of tongues. I spoke for probably two, two minutes of speaking in tongues, and this is what I wrote down. Two minutes of speaking in tongues, and that's where I got. And the revelation for today of the Holy Spirit is God on earth, right now, at this very second, at this very moment. See, me breathing in, holy, no, I can feel that. But guess what? Holy Spirit is a lot more closer than that. Closer than my breathing. Closer than the clothes that I'm wearing. Closer. God is with you. God is with you, dwelling with you right now. The body that you're in right now. Feel, look at your hands. Look at your feet. Feel your body. Do you know what that is? That's the temple of God. And in you is where God dwells. God dwells in you. You are the temple. You are the temple of the Most High God. And that's why we have to treat our bodies with respect. Right? That's why I learned to make sure that you eat right. Exercise regularly. These are not just things that, you know, because of, you know, as a fad. No, because it's necessary. Because you want to have a strong vessel for the Lord. You want to treat it right. 
Remember, your hands right now, look at your nails, look at the fingerprints, look at everything. The writing is on, you know, like your palms, everything, your nerves. Holy Spirit is there. God Himself is there. Stop looking up. God is with you now. And God, you know, especially when it comes to your situation, God is looking up. You know, look up, please take care of my situation problem. Wrong. You have the power now to speak to the mountain. When I, whenever I have a problem and there's something wrong, I would say, I speak to this problem and in the name of Jesus, it is fixed. If it's financial you're going through, stop asking God because God is here and the power that is in you, you just say to this problem, whatever it is, whether it be finance, health, relationship, you say, I speak to this situation right now in the name of Jesus, it is fixed. Or you can tell up by faith, you can say, Father, I thank you that in the name of Jesus, my problems are solved, right? So there's another way of activating faith. Right, it is either asking or commanding. Okay, right. So you're again. Uh, well, we'll go to a different topic. Um, I don't want to take that away, but yeah, you can just say that, like Father, with wholeheartedly. I thank you that my problems are solved. Father, I thank you that in the name of Jesus, my family is turning to you. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus that my city, that my city, is healed. Right. So yeah. So before I go, I, I wanna. Guys, do this challenge with me, okay? So, we know what's going on in the world right now, and we know the situation, right? So I'm gonna look for this verse first, okay? Uh, okay, so Ephesians six twelve. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness in high places. They're in the air. Because uh, the other day, I just had a revelation where every city has its own principalities of demons. And they're the ones in charge of that. Spirit of violence. You guys know the spirit of violence is a rampage. Spirit of fear. Spirit of chaos. All right, so join me in this one. So what we're going to do every night for the next 21 days. And we're, we're going to see that our, our, our very own city will change. We're going to speak into that. We're going to intercede for our very own city. Okay. We're going to intercede. So we're all just going to say, is like, Father, we thank you. We thank you for who you are. So right now, we speak to the, to the demons in the air, to the, every principalities, and every game powers, and every darkness of the world. And every, all the demonic uh, spirits in the high places right now, in the second round, we come against you in the name of Jesus. Right now. We break your power. We break what you're doing in our cities. And right now, Father, we release your peace. We release your kingdom in their cities right now. We release your love. We release your peace. We release you. Father, our city is yours. Touch the hearts of those protesting. Touch the hearts of every of everyone in that place right now, God. That let your peace be revealed. Let your love be known. Let let the whole world know, Jesus, that you are real. Father, touch them right now. And we break every power of every demonic spirit in the air right now. We break off fear. We break off chaos. We break off everything from the enemy. Father, we thank you. That in the name of Jesus, our city is healed. Our city is blessed. In Jesus' name, right? So, say like that. You know, it doesn't have to be what I said. It's Say what you need. Intercede. You know, that's why you pray to the Holy Spirit. You ask the Holy Spirit how to speak, you know. If you're not, if you don't pray again, you guys speak in tongues, right? So if you remember, just speak to your city by speaking in tongues and intercede. Everybody should rise up more, okay? Let's change our city, right? If you remember, Jesus gave us the power and the authority for a reason. It's not to show off. It's not to say, oh, look what I can do. It's not. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. So that's what we're supposed to be doing as well now too. We are here to destroy the worst of the devil. So let's try it. Let's go change our city. Guys, let's try this. Let's keep destroying the kingdom of the enemy. And let's bring our Father's kingdom. His kingdom come. His will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Okay. So let's keep doing that, guys. So let's intercede. Let's do every night. Start off. I don't care if you're doing 15 minutes or more. But... Let's, let's, let's pray. If you guys are speaking in tongues, speak. Let's change your city. And, and 
and if not if you guys don't know what how to pray and just and uh, what to say just say father we thank you we invite your presence in our city father don't no, don't even worry about trying to say oh we uh, right now we're we're gonna go against we command these unclean spirits blah 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 don't worry about that just bring in the presence of the lord into your city because where the spirit of the lord is there is freedom right so just say father we thank you that you're changing our city right now father we thank you in jesus name that you're touching the lives of the protesters father we thank you that you're touching the lives of those people right now father I thank you that you're bringing order so what is it that you want done in your city Thank the Father in advance, right? So because faith pleases God, and you're calling things that be not as if they were. So you're having faith that, Father, I thank you that this protest is going to end. Father, I thank you that you're bringing justice into our city. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name that you're doing this, okay? So guys, every night, let's do this. Let's pray together, and yeah. So that's it. Hope that encourages you guys. Like, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is again this is I never know I never have a game plan I just again I just google my stuff on my iPad right here and and just write things down you know and yeah anyways guys get to know the Holy Spirit let the Holy Spirit be your friend just remember you're never alone and you have the power to destroy things there's power in what you speak and there's life and death in your tongue right so yeah guys let's let's speak our cities let's change it let's get to know the Holy Spirit more and let's grow so I'm going to quickly pray for you guys, all right? Okay, Father, I thank you for my brothers and sisters that are watching right now. Father, I thank you that you're giving them the same revelations that you have given me. Father, remind them, God, of who they are. Remind them, God, that you are there. Remind them, Holy Spirit, you're there with them right now and that you're touching them. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that this person is already healed. Whatever they're going through, I don't care if it's physical pain, that's healed. Financial, relationship, love, that's healed. Father. I speak your will upon their lives right now. Your kingdom come, your will be done in their lives. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name that it is done. So my brothers and sisters, be blessed, be healed in Jesus' name. All right. Love you guys.